fireside chat with uh, Shri Apurva Chandra, Secretary, Minister of Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Government of India, with none other than Mr. Praveen Someshwar, Co-Chair, and Fiki Media and Entertainment Committee, MD and CEO, HD Media. Can we have the, these two fantastic personalities on stage? Big round of applause as these two gentlemen take stage, center stage. Praveen ji, Apurva ji, stage is all yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chandra. You've been up on stage morning, afternoon, and you're saying you're going to be on stage in the evening also. Yeah, that's what I said. Ki, this is my second appearance now. And uh, now this is more of occasion to people say it, for people to say cut, 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 because it will be more of a repeat. OK, I'm, I'm not therefore go going to introduce you. Okay. Sure. Because I think they all know you, and I wouldn't get to introducing you other than saying that you are from Maharashtra and you are an alum of IIT uh, Delhi. Yes, I yeah. am from Maharashtra cadre. <laughs> Maharashtra cadre. <laughs> that is nice. Okay. Look. Uh, Me and I Vichala Ota, to be Marathi Prussian Vichara, to be Marathi Tas Bolu. But I, unfortunately, don't know Marathi as well as yes. you know. So, you know. The media and entertainment industry is getting disrupted. There is no doubt about it. First through the digital stuff, now AI will further d disrupt it significantly. You know, it obviously brings challenges, but equally brings a lot of opportunities, if I may say so, in terms of innovation, in terms of bringing out content, which is very, very different. Social media has democratized content. It could be news, it could be media, it could be any form of content. And therefore, it's really challenged the legacy businesses. It could be any of the businesses, it's challenged them. Okay. Comes with its opportunities and many challenges. Opportunities is new revenue monetization models, which is an amazing opportunity. Reach, which is amazing. Challenges, many, misinformation, which you're always concerned about. You know, it, you could call it fake news, you could call it misinformation. Uh, it could be regulation of OTT content. You just spoke about it in the morning about self-regulation and therefore what are, and it could also be the balance between big tech and media companies. Okay, how big tech, you know, is able to monetize but does not share the spoils, because they're constantly using the same content. So many challenges, if I was. Now, the ideal situation is everybody finds a balance. The old legacy media, while the big tech and the new media organizations and find a balance, but that is, there are many challenges, if I may say so, as we get to finding that balance. So, you know, given this background, and given all that is happening, what is your idea of balance here between legacy media organizations, which could be news or content, and the other side is social media and big tech stuff? Yeah, you have raised uh, two or three issues in the same question. One is, of course, the misinformation and fake news, because now social media, it is largely user-generated content there is less of editorial, uh, editorial anything uh, which is editorial uh, who are looking at it and uh, curating the content and uh, looking at the genuineness of that content. So the mis chances of misinformation, fake news, they are much more. In fact, after me, I think Ishan of uh, YouTube is following after me and you can ask Ishan also the challenges which he faces on the content which is coming on YouTube. We are constantly in conversation with the, all the social media intermediaries, whether it is YouTube, whether it is Facebook, whether it is Telegram and others, on how to prevent misinformation and fake news on these uh, platforms. Uh, it is a continuous dialogue and uh, they, are, they have to come up with more of tech solutions, especially in our country where there are multiple languages because I think their AI is more proficient in probably English, but here in India, because there are multiple languages, the, uh, the 
content also comes out in various languages and it is very fast. The user generated content comes out and there, there, is a, there are multiple challenges on how to prevent that. The second issue which you raised was regarding the balance between the traditional media and the uh, big tech. So there again, uh, there, have been, there have been some cases in the international jurisdiction, especially Australia, Canada, and then EU also is trying that. So to bring about a balance between the content creator and the intermediaries who are making that, taking it to the people. It is in a way a symbiotic relation also because the big tech has helped more and more people to, for the media to reach more and more people. Otherwise it would not have the reach would have been limited. The print media is, is a certain clientele who can read and write, but then with big tech it is going to much further. And that balance, but that balance has to be there between the content creator and the intermediary. So uh, there are international some experiences. Currently in India, the case is going on before the Competition Commission of India. And uh, we are awaiting the judgment, how that happens. And we are also in dialogue with the digital publishers. So whether that such, uh, if uh, legislation is required, whether that will be under competition law or a separate legislation will be required on the lines of what has been done in other countries. So this is an evolving field and we are working with the industry in this area. I, I like the way you answered both misinformation or fake news and you spoke about the balance and in both cases, I think uh, you form the nodal part of the government in terms of managing the scenario, in terms of administering it, in terms of building unison, if I may say so, between the industry and big tech, and therefore. You think uh, the industry can do something more to come together and help solve some of these causes? See, uh, on the... OTT, which also you mentioned previously, because initial, before we came out with the digital media rules in 2021, there was no particular regulation. And uh, uh, the OTTs were faced with FIRs. Anybody who is dissatisfied with content would file a FIR in some remote uh, part of the country and people would be saddled with police cases. Now the digital media rules have helped a lot in the sense that now there is a particular framework that in case if somebody dissatisfied first they have, and there is a three tier structure that first if they are dissatisfied first they go to the, uh, uh, the OTT platform itself and if they are not able to resolve then the second tier which is headed by eminent personalities and uh, it is again a self-regulating body which the OTT platforms themselves have created and that is also doing very well and as I mentioned in the morning also thereafter the government. As regards the OTT platforms, we have received only one complaint so far over the past two years, which so that shows that uh, it is working pretty well. Same, uh, so this is a light touch uh, approach to regulation and we would like the same approach to work in other sectors also. Uh, the same we had uh, adopted in the cable television, under the cable television network for the TV broadcasters also. Unfortunately, they have gone to court and currently there is stay on uh, uh, actions so uh, but we feel that this is the right approach this is light touch regulation and it works much better than a hard regulation and that is what has seen to the profusion of content getting created in India so much of content is getting created so much of money is getting invested into new content creation in the country uh, I'm going to just shift uh, as industry Prasad Bharati is very much part of industry but it's under your agency how is Prasad Bharati transforming itself as it builds on this journey? Uh, we have a new CEO who would also be, I think, who, who is speaking uh, later in the, on this uh, platform. And uh, Prasar Bharti, again, uh, over the past few years, we have seen that not much of content is getting created on Prasar Bharti. He will explain it in more detail, but then uh, within this month itself, I think many new serials are going to come on Prasar Bharti. Prasar Bharti is undergoing a transformation and uh, just 10-15 days back again films have, new films have started coming back on Prasar Bharti which were not there for a, a few years. Regional films also will start and uh, fresh content is also getting created. In fact, today at this forum we would like to invite others also because uh, to participate in this transformation of Prasar Bharti and uh, more on a revenue sharing mode where Prasar Bharti puts in some money, you also become a part of the marketing so that both can share if the program does, does well. 
it should not just be the responsibility of Prasar Bharti to pay for the program and then market it also and whether the and uh, not earn any revenue out of it. So both should become a party. We would like it to be a partnership between Prasar Bharti and private producers. Interesting. You made quite a pitch uh, as you sat here. You're becoming a marketeer, Mr. Chandra. <laughs> you know, I'm, go I'm going to move a little, uh, move on from regulation and challenges to how can this industry grow. Uh, in the vision document, we spoke about, uh, the government's been speaking about, that 1% of GDP should be media and entertainment. That's $100 billion in the next five, six years. We have, what, $20 billion roughly in terms of overall media and entertainment. What are the two or three things you think the government is doing to unlock that potential? Uh, today, I mean, the ENY report was uh, unveiled and uh, about $25 billion, the media and entertainment industry. So it is just a bit below 1% of the uh, country's GDP. And also it is about 1% of the world's media and entertainment industry. So we have to grow this percentage per se. And the country, as we know, today it is a $3 trillion economy and we are soon going to be within the three, four years, we are going to cross $5 trillion and reach $10 trillion in the next 10, 10 years or so. And the media and entertainment industry has to grow beyond 1%. We have to go to 2%, maybe. I mean, of the, and we are growing at a faster pace than the country. And uh, uh, the world is interested in Indian stories. The world is interested in Indian, uh, to learn more about India. We have the stories, but we, we are constrained by infrastructure. We are constrained by human. Uh, manpower, so that is what we need to facilitate. We, the industry and the government, need to work together in that. Uh, as regards incentives, because to attract more and more filmmakers to come to India, the government of India announced its incentive package uh, last year in June. We are happy that uh, we have released the first incentive of over one crore to a particular film called Inheritance, and uh, there are four or five other projects in the pipeline. Uh, and many of the states are also offering incentives. So when we go for co-production, it is the, all the incentives get clubs, the state incentive, the government of India incentive, and the incentive from the foreign country. So that is what we have to look at, and it becomes an attractive proposition for anyone to come and shoot in India. Also for animation and visual effects, the government of India has opened the incentives for animation, visual effects, uh, and post-production. We want to simplify the process for which, by which the animation and visual effect uh, incentives are given, make it much simpler than shooting incentives. And most of the large Hollywood productions do come to India for post-production, and we hope that these incentives will make it even more attractive. Well, you know, one of the things you said was people, and therefore the people involved in that. AI is going to change that significantly over the next few years you will see more and more content which is AI created. Uh, you know, is the government thinking ahead uh, on that space also, or should they think about it? One of the learnings we have is when you don't regulate such spaces over a period of time, and I just heard Harit say don't regulate, uh, but equally when you don't regulate, there is other businesses which die and new businesses come and play. And it's not an equal playing field. So as AI comes in, is there forward-looking thinking on that? As Mr. Vagela also said before me, that less regulation is the best regulation. I, I would think, don't give me ideas to regulate. Don't give the I government ideas to regulate more and more. <laughs> let, the, let the industry grow. Uh, uh, you know, I love the thought, less regulation is much, much better. Uh, but equal playing fields are important so that everybody is unlock, able to unlock their potential. Now, the last question I'd ask as we just summarize this. You know, you spoke about incentives, uh, you spoke about various programs, you spoke about what the central government is doing, what the state government should be looking at. And a couple of uh, thoughts on what the industry should be doing to unlock that potential. The industry, of course, is doing uh, its best to reach its stories to the world. There are, there are a lot of stories in India and uh, 
we should go more to the hinterland, I would think, and take stories from the ground level. Uh, there are a lot of stories to be told. In fact, uh, if you, uh, if people here have seen the conclave which we conducted on the Ban Ki Baat program of the Prime Minister, for which the 100th episode happened just on 30th of April. So there were almost 100 people in Delhi, and each of them had it, their own story of what they are doing, how they are transforming uh, the country. And all of these stories, in some way or the other, they are important stories. They need to be told to the world. They need to be told to the country. And these are the stories which need to be carried. Apart from that, our culture, our heritage, there are so many stories hidden in that. And uh, there, that we need to take ahead. And uh, the world, I'm sure, is interested in our story. And the world wants to know more about India as the heft of India in the economy in the world grows. And uh, we look forward to support the, and facilitate the media and entertainment industry to take this forward. Thank you. Exciting times. Uh, clearly, uh, you know, as we, as we unlock and play to our potential, uh, look forward to do it in partnership, industry and the government, so that we can unlock that one. Thank you. Thank you.